Welcome to Max's Movie Reviews, the show where I'm going to review movies for you. Today's movie is going to be Ready Player One. Jugador listo uno. Uh, what is there to say about Ready Player One? Um, you know, it's the new film that's out. Um, it's the one that's got a few people talking, especially nerds. It's Spielberg's new film, which is pretty cool because, you know, Spielberg did some good films like Jurassic Park, Jaws, E.T., a bunch of those classics. Real good films. Love them all. Ready Player One is Steven Spielberg's newest film, and it's pretty good. The movie is about a bunch of nerds in VR chat as they run around and live fake little lives to forget how much their real lives suck. Our main character, his name is Wade Watson, and as it says in the trailer, his name is like that because of references. My name's Wade Watts. My dad picked that name because it sounded like a superhero's alter ego, like Peter Parker or Bruce Banner. See what I mean? His online character is called Parsival, who's a little blue boy who runs around. Yes, he was blue. He was very blue. He's blue, abba dee, abba die. Parsival had blue skin that also looked very human, but because he was an avatar, he could customize it however he wanted. Something that is cool is when you see his character for the first time, you notice he has a Thundercats belt buckle, and he, when he's walking through, you see my boy Robocop, you see Freddy Krueger and Beetlejuice, Hello Kitty, Hola Gato. Parsival, or Wade or whatever you want to call him, he is a nerd who enjoys 80s pop culture and gives you uh, and gives us our main idea of what the world is. It is essentially a giant virtual reality created by another nerd um, who loved 80s stuff and makes it so anyone can be whatever they want and do whatever they want. He has many friends such as a big monster that shoots people and builds stuff called H, um, a girl he's got the hots for called Artemis and then two samurai dudes who are pretty cool. H is a big muscle. You're led to believe it's a him, but spoiler alert, it's a woman. In this world called the Oasis, you can change a lot about yourself. You can change your hair, your age, your species. You don't even have to be human out in the Oasis. You could be anything. You could be a multitude of 80s characters, Robocop, Freddy Krueger and Beetlejuice, Hello Kitty. You can also change your voice like this. H is a big muscle guy, but spoiler alert, turns out it's a woman. Doesn't matter though. Her whole character is sort of like the muscle, the very strong one who shoots up people and blows them up but also builds all the cars for people, which is really cool. Another cool thing is that you see posters everywhere from Back to the Future and Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Really cool stuff like that. Artemis is the girl that uh, Wade has the hots for. She's the pro gamer girl, gamer girl who wants to start a revolution to free the Oasis from the corrupt government because it's one of those movies where the government is the bad guy. And then the two samurai guys who don't get enough screen time for me to actually remember who they are or what they did. One of them turned into the Gundam at the end, so that was pretty cool. What good movie doesn't have a good bad guy? Because guess what? I don't remember jack shit about this one. The bad guy in Ready Player One is the same bad guy who played the bad guy in Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. He's a good actor, but it's a very similar character. Both want to keep something under control. Both want to destroy the rebellion. Both have big egos. But only one of them looks like Stan Smith from American Dad. Good morning, USA! Into the plot of the movie, because it's very simple, but they make it look complicated with all the references. And so much dirty CGI. But it was supposed to look like a video game, so good job. Buen trabajo! Four thumbs up. So, like I keep pushing off, the whole plot of the movie revolves around this world 
and that the creator of it died and he left some Easter eggs and whoever can find these keys to get to the Easter egg will gain ultimate power over the entire world and a whole whopping load of money. My father gave me a small loan of a million dollars. Parsifal and his friends go on a lot of quests and have been spending years to try and find these Easter eggs, but they end up figuring it out. The first quest revolves around racing which is really cool because you see a lot of sweet rides. During the race, they have to face a lot of obstacles such as twists and turns and wacky, wavy stuff. And then uh, the T-Rex from Jurassic Park shows up and King Kong jumps down off a building. It's pretty cool. Not gonna spoil how they figure it out, but in the end, they get the ticket. They get the golden ticket. They get a chance to go to Willy Wonka's Magic Playland. The next challenge involves the whole Shining. So if you haven't seen that movie, this movie, this whole part is gonna be confused. I liked it a lot. I thought a lot of the jokes and references to the movie itself were really good. A very close person to me just straight up said, I saw the Simpsons episode on this, so I'm good. So if you did that, that's good too. It was a really neat challenge and I thought, hey, it's pretty nifty. Soon after that, the movie takes a turn where they stop going into the world for a while and they start to focus more on the villain and just the rebellion itself. From there on out, I kind of got sucked out. Like, I liked it, and I was like, oh, this is fun. I'm watching a bunch of stuff fight each other. I never thought it was, like, perfect because I, I knew it was going off a lot of nostalgia. But during this whole rebellion thing, it felt very, very much like those, like those really bad teenage movies where the teenagers have to stand up, fight the government, fight the power, man. I hate that. It's, it's so overused. It's so bad. You saw it in Divergent, Hunger Games over the hedge. You get the idea. I'm sure you can name a lot more than I could. During this whole scene, I kind of blurred out for a while, but then during the final fight is when it gets really good. They play a bunch of 80s music, and then you see a bunch of 80s characters come into fight. You see the DeLorean again, you see the Iron Giant, you see Mecha Godzilla. you see the Gundam, you see Battletoads, you see He-Man, and Overwatch, uh, Lord of the Rings, Halo, Lara Croft, bunch of cool stuff like that, you know? It was really cool, I, I enjoyed it a lot. I mean, I say that a lot, but it was fun. It was fun to watch all these characters, you know, go out and kick each other's butt. Yeah, the final challenge involves the old school Atari game adventure. And the joke is that it was the first to have an Easter egg. So find the Easter egg and you find the, you find the, you find the final key, and then you meet an old wizard, he gives you a magic pen, and then you tell him, I don't want to sign that, no, no, I don't want to sign that at all. And then he takes you to a little boy's bedroom, which is weird, but then you find out he's the little boy, so it's not weird. Then he gives you some life lesson, then you win. And that's the, that's the movie. The movie is, Bunch of nerds doing nerd stuff, fighting the government, and then they win. I enjoyed it. I I liked it a lot. I thought it was I thought it was very fun. Um, it's a good film to see if you like pop culture, if you like references, or you know, if you hate pop culture and you hate references, don't see it. Or if you hate like seeing a reference every five minutes, don't see it, I guess. But I liked it a lot. I thought it was really fun. Um, it, it gives a lot of potential to other stuff. So with this review in the bag, and it's all finished and said and done, I've got one question for you. Are you ready, player one? Access Vision, your voice, your community.